Today we will perform a topology optimization using Hypermesh and OptiStruct. This type of optimization is commonly implemented in the aerospace and automotive industry to design highly lightweight yet robust structural components. We will optimize an aeroplane flap actuator mount to reduce its overall weight without compromising its strength. The optimized design will have a 60% mass reduction as shown in this image. Let's get right into it. The link for the CAD model used in this video is provided in the description. Feel free to download the CAD and follow this video step by step to get a clear understanding of the overall setup process. The first step is to divide the geometry into design and non-design regions. After that we will apply a material and property to all the components. Let's take a look at how this is done. Once the geometry is imported in Hypermesh, one component is visible in the model browser. Before we start with the optimization setup, we need to perform geometry editing to separate the design and non-design regions in this geometry. Let's start by renaming the component. This will be the design space. Now create another component for non-design space. Let's change the color for better visualization. Using the geometry ribbon, open the split tool. Select split with surfaces option. Switch the target selection to solids. Select the solid component. We will select this surface as the tool and enable extend trimmer option. Review the cut. Press down the shift key to deselect the unwanted trim areas. Split the geometry. We will do the same operation on other side of the geometry. These circular mounting areas will be moved to the non-design component during the next step as they need to be retained during the optimization run. Select the solid again and set this surface as the tool. Review the cut and then split the geometry. Now we will use the split with lines option. Set target to solids and select the main solid. In the tool selection box, we will select the two washer lines located around the mounting hole locations. Enable extend trimmer and review the cut. Split the geometry. As the geometry editing is done, we can exit the split tool. Now switch the selector to solids. Select the trimmed solids by pressing down control key. Now press O key to open organize tool. We will move the selected solids to non-design component. Now create a new material and provide a name to it. We will enter the default mechanical properties of aluminum. For this analysis, we are using the unit system Newton, millimeter, ton, second. Create a new property for design component. As we are using solid geometry, change the card image to P solid. In the material selection box, select the aluminum material. Let's duplicate this property for the non-design component. We can change the color of these property collectors as desired. For the design component, assign the design property in selection box. For the non-design component, we will select the non-design property. The material gets assigned automatically. 
Before we start with the actual optimization setup, we need to create a linear static analysis load step. This load step will serve as a base for the optimization setup. Let's start by creating loads and constraints at required locations in the geometry. Now open the mesh ribbon and select tetra mesh option. We will select all the solids in selection box. Using the options box, let's set the maximum element size to 5. Set mesh destination to original component. Create the tetra mesh. Once the mesh is generated, exit the tetra mesh tool. Using the visualization options, let's turn on shaded elements view and hide the geometry. Now create a new component to store RBE2 rigid elements. From the model ribbon, select RBE2 option. Switch the dependent selector to faces. Now select this internal face. We will select all 6 degrees of freedom. Create the rigid. Similarly, create another rigid at the other mounting hole location. Now select these two faces and create a rigid. Create a new load collector to store single point constraints. Let's orient the model for better selection of SPC locations. In the Analyze ribbon, select BC's tool. Let's use the Constraints sub-option. We will select the master node of RBE2 elements present at the mounting hole locations. With all 6 degrees of freedom selected, create the constraints. Close the BCs tool. Create another load collector for loads. Let's use the apply force sub option. Now select the master node of this RBE2 element. We will apply a force of magnitude 1000 Newton in positive Z direction. Create the force load. Now change the view orientation such that we can see the back plate. We will use the apply pressure sub option and select this face. With magnitude as 1 Newton per millimeter square, apply the pressure load. This pressure magnitude will be applied on all elements located on the selected face. Check that the direction of pressure load is as required. Exit the pressure tool. Let's hide all the loads and constraints. To couple these loads and constraints into a linear static analysis, create a new load step. Select analysis type as linear static. In the SPC field, select SPC load collector. In the load field, select loads load collector. Now we will start with the optimization setup process. In this, we will create the topology design variable, responses, constraints, as well as the objective function. The main goal is to reduce the mass of the component but maintain its overall strength by minimizing the compliance. In the optimize ribbon, select topology option. Provide a name for this topology design variable. Set property type as P solid and select the design property in selection box. Let's apply minimum dimension limit as 10 mm. We will also use pattern grouping with one plane symmetry. 
change anchor and grid point selection to coordinates. The anchor coordinate will be origin. For the first grid, set y as 1. Thus, we are using planar symmetry across the xz plane. Close the dialog box. Now select the responses option. We will create a response for mass fraction. Mass fraction is the ratio of optimized mass to initial mass. Let's switch the property type to by entity. Enter property type as P solid and select the design property. Close the box. Let's create one more response. Select the response type as compliance. We will keep all the options as default. Now we will create the constraints for this topology optimization. Select the mass fraction response in proper selection box. We will set the upper bound of mass fraction as 0.4. This means that we will only retain 40% of the initial mass after optimization. Lastly, we need to define the objective for this optimization. The objective will be to minimize the compliance response for analysis load step. In other words, this means that we want to maximize the stiffness of this geometry under applied boundary conditions. Now open the analyze ribbon and select the run parameters card. To skip element quality check before optimization run, set the check L option to no. The optimization deck is now ready for run. Let's export this solver deck to a new folder using the file menu. Make sure that you use underscore in place of space while entering all file names to avoid any errors during the solver run. Set export options to all and complete the export. We will copy the location of this FEM file. We will use compute console to submit this job to Optistruct solver. In the input file box, paste the file location and select the FEM file. Let's apply some additional run settings. We will perform this run using 6 processors. Apply these settings and close the box. Click on run to launch the Optistruct solver. This will take some time to solve. The optimization run has converged and a feasible design has been obtained. Let's create a new page to load the results. The client will be automatically switched to Hyperview. We will split the graphics area into two parts. In the first window, select the des.h3d file from working directory. Let's hide the results component. In the second window, select the s1.h3d file. Apply the results. We will synchronize the two windows. In the first window, open the contour panel. 
With averaging method as simple, apply the element density contour for first iteration. Apply the corresponding stress results in second window. Now switch to the last iteration to view the new element densities. Check the stress results for last iteration. We can clearly see that although there is an increase in maximum stress value, the results are still within safe limits. Now let's visualize the optimized geometry. Open the ISO panel and apply the ISO plot. We can adjust the ISO value as per our requirement. This is the optimized shape of the geometry where only 40% of the initial mass is retained. We can refine this optimized design using any preferred CAD software. To do this, we can export this ISO surface in STL file format using the tools menu. Select the file location and provide a name to this STL file. Complete the export. Now this optimized shape can be opened and edited in any CAD software. We have successfully performed topology optimization using Hypermesh and OptiStruct. And this is how we can perform a topology optimization using Hypermesh and OptiStruct. If you like this video, please hit the red subscribe button and give a thumbs up, it helps a lot. Make sure to follow me on social media to stay updated about latest video content. Thanks for watching.